I guess it's an interesting video on Wild Rift. So as you guys can see, we're back with another Ezreal commentary guide. Now there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to make this guide. Um, mostly it's just because of the new build, but I'll talk about it a little bit later. But before we get into that, just a couple of, I guess you could say, public service announcements. So patch 2.5 is coming on October 13th, so it's slightly delayed. So it's going to take quite some time for it to come. So uh, October 13th is the day. Other than that, Brand actually got Hotfix nerfed just, I believe it was yesterday. Um, yeah, he got Hotfix nerfed, so his um, W and his E got nerfed and his ult as well. So we'll have to see how it affects Brand. But I have played already like 10 plus games where I have fought against and with a Brand on my team. Doesn't seem that it has um, pushed him out of the meta. He's still doing pretty um, alright. He's still destroying um, people left, right, and center. Uh, still a team by monster, but definitely not as broken as what he was before. So, anyways, let's get back to the video at hand. So, obviously, um, you know, it's not really a spoiler because it's in the title, it's in the thumbnail. Our team is throwing the game. So, what that means is, of course, you know, we're, we're going to be getting ahead in the early game. So, even throw a game, you're going to have to have a lead. So, can expect you know us to actually get a significant lead in the early game but you know we start throwing it all across the board and my whole team in this game is actually doing well we are doing so well that we're starting to throw the game so sometimes I honestly don't even want my team to do that well because every single lane is stomping the enemy and we become so overconfident that we keep overextending and keep getting caught out even myself you guys will see a little bit later but you know we, we just start to throw the game like to to a, to a large extent, like you can already see from the thumbnail, but we just start to throw the game to a large extent. So, of course we have not get, gotten to that point yet. Matter of fact, Akshan on the enemy team has gone for his blood. So, anyways, you know, I'm gonna talk about the new Ezreal build, which actually the new Ezreal build is more like the old Ezreal build. So, I mentioned in my Ezreal complete guide, um, of course, Link, uh, not Link, the, I will put that up in the cards above if you guys want to refer to it, but, um, in my Ezreal Complete Guide, I did mention that you don't really need Blade of the Rune King anymore, but you know, I was kind of wrong, you still kind of actually need it. it uh, Ezreal is way better with Blade of the Rune King. So, what I used to do is, I would go, uh, of course, Mana Mune, Triforce, uh, Boots, and then into Serelda's Grudge, and then I'll go for Death's Dance, and as well as the Garden Angel, but turns out that not having Blade of the Rune King affects quite a number of things. Firstly, of course, your damage, your lifesteal, and your auto attacks itself because Ezreal if you're playing him properly he is a caster AD carry however you do have to auto attack in between as well because now you're not making use of his um, passive at all which is the one that increases his attack speed um, as he is using uh, spells as you guys can see I have three stacks at the current moment that is the passive I'm referring to now I have it at a full four stacks so you do have to actually auto attack in between and without the Blade of the Room King's um, I guess you could say attack speed uh, you know, it, it kind of makes it a little bit harder. So, uh, and also the on hit damage of the Blade of the Rune King, of course. So, Blade of the Rune King turns out is actually pretty essential for Ez for Ezreal. And you know, all the top Ezreal players actually do build Blade of the Rune King. So now the new Ezreal build becomes, uh, of course, you always go tier, uh, Sheen, complete your Mana Immune, complete your Triforce, get your Boot and Chance, uh, even earlier if need be, and then um, after which you go for your Blade of the Rune King, which is basically what you used to do all along previously. And then you go for your Sorella's Grudge, and then as your last item, you can go for either um, Garden Angel or Death's Dance. Now, I do go for Garden Angel majority of the time, just because the Revive passive is really good. Of course, with the AD, um, or the AD and the uh, armor as well. So, I, I, I generally always favor Garden Angel over Death's Dance, but some people do actually prefer Death's Dance to Garden Angel, so I, it's s sort of a personal preference kind of thing but I think by and large Garden Angel is generally better so here we have picked up our boots as well as our man we we're 1, 0 and 2 so we are doing pretty well now as you guys know I actually take champion on Ezreal so it's quite important to just not die in the early game so you can actually get some uh, have some champion stats later on in the game here the enemy team is obviously doing the dragon Trindamir is uh, you know coming in but I don't really want to get caught up in there so I just arcane shift over the wall here I'm just trying to get off some poke while trying to dodge all the enemies poke um, Yasuo gets a really nice ult which allows me to hit a ultimate onto two people here you know I'm flashing um, forward for you know possibly the kill uh, Nami manages to pick up the Senna with her um, bubble so that's pretty nice 
So our team is starting to uh, starting to win. We did concede the infernal Drake though, so but we did get you know two huge kills onto the enemy team. So at this point in time, it's still a pretty standard game. We're not stomping on them or or anything, but you know we are doing pretty all right if I do say so myself. So here, me and Nami just gonna pick up a plate and clear out the wave, of course. So we do see that the enemy jung uh, jungle, which is the uh, actually not it's not the Nunu. The Nunu is actually a Nunu top. Sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, here, we, you know, we're just gonna clear the wave. You know, of course, I'm spamming my spells to charge up my mana mute, and then we can just go straight for the recall. All right. So of course, I go I'm gonna pick up the Sheen, which is you know a huge power spike item for Ezreal. Now here I'm actually going for a long range out to try to help out in the fight that's happening in the bot lane. I actually hit everybody, uh, more or less everybody, to, uh, with that out. But unfortunately, Akshan actually goes on a killing spree. And you know, at this point, the game is still very, very uh, even, I would say. So nothing too huge is happening as of yet. We're not stomping on them, but we will actually get to that point pretty soon. So here, just pretty much just skirmishing with the enemy bot lane. This is a mistake a lot of Brahms make. When you pull up your shield, you, you do have to stand uh, in front of your AD carry to block, but that doesn't mean you s purposely step up to the enemy ADC to get off free damage. So here we, that gives me an easy double kill. A long range, max range Q on the Senna for the kill as she is in her shadow, not her shadow, in her mist. So, you know, Senna's mist doesn't actually um, hide her from view. Like, you can't target her with abilities like Zed's ultimate, but you can still hit her with skill shots like Ezreal's Q. So. Uh, you know, she doesn't really get too much from that, and she's obviously in the center, so you know, it's easy to kill her in the mist in that situation. So, as I was saying, if you're playing Braum, you do not have to just step up and take free damage from the enemy uh, ADC or, the, or any enemy for that. Look at look at what the Braum is doing. He puts up his shield and he walks forward, even though he's not necessarily blocking anything for his teammates. Like, in a team fight, you do want to put up your shield, stand between the enemies and your teammates, and absorb all the damage. But, if you're not in a team fight, you're just like using your shield just to block an ability or whatnot. After you block it uh, already, just back off and, and you know, don't just give the enemy free damage. Like, you do take reduced damage, yes, but you don't want to give the enemy any free damage for no good reason. So, yeah, a lot of Brahms make that mistake. Alright, so here we get rooted, but... It's still fine. Akshan is actually hovering uh, around the uh, blue buff kind of area, so we gotta be a bit cautious. Nice uh, ultimate by the uh, Nami to net me another double kill. So we're at 5 0 and 4 with our evolved mana immune by this point already. So we're definitely very fed um, personally. And we're also gonna pick up the mid tower, like so. Boom. And there, uh, Nunu actually kind of messed up his snowball. He snowballed into the wall. If you caught that, a glimpse, like. Two seconds, you could actually see uh, him snowballing into the wall. Uh, Senna tries to snipe out the Nami or the Gragas, doesn't really work out. So we can all just reset and get uh, get our items. Uh, Yasuo actually has a Solari Charge Blade into the Blade of the Rune King, which is the optimal build, but I do believe he kind of wasted a goal. I do believe he had a Static Shift just now, so he must have sold that off to get um, this two item combo. So not sure what he was really thinking there, but yeah, so. Personally, on our end, we have our completed Triforce, we have the armor boots as well. Reason for that, of course, is that the entire enemy team is um, AD, except for the Nunu, who is um, not actually building damage. He's building, uh, he is actually building damage, so, uh, you know, but it's still very, very worth it. So, he, because he's building damage, he's so squishy that we can jump over the wall and easily kill him. Akshan gets knocked out by the Nami ultimate. I get a triple kill on the Brahm, you know, I, I, of course, I have to greet for the Quadra, so I'm going to flash forward. And, uh, and hit a Q for the Quadra. So I, I, as I was just saying that like, where was he? I pinged the dragon because I suspected the 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 um, Wukong was. Actually, I didn't ping the dragon, but I did uh, actually verbally say to the Nami who, who I was on voice chat with. I think that the Nunu, uh, not the Nunu. I think that the Wukong is on the dragon, so I'm not going to be, be getting a Penta, and that was indeed the case. So now by this point, the kills is 19 to 8. We are like 8k go up, you could say that we're in a very very firm lead already. So here is where the throwing begins. Me and Nami for some reason overextend and we don't back off so the entire enemy team <laughs> comes for us and of course with like everybody we just both get destroyed so I, I yeah that was a huge mistake on my part. I, I'm breeding for the tower and yeah I do make, make that mistake sometimes but yeah so thankfully he is cross mapping with the Trindamir. 
So as the enemy team is in bot lane, trying to defend against us, they are in the top lane getting the tower, but they also make the same mistake where they do overstay, the enemy team has rotated, Gragas is coming in, but um, this fight is technically, it, it is alright for us, Yasuo gets a relatively nice ult, he goes onto the Akshan, he gets the kill on the Akshan, nice knock up onto two enemies, gets the kill and boom, we, we kill like four of them again, where am I? Oh, nearly managed to KS somebody or secure a kill on somebody at least. So, um, we're still doing pretty alright. We're still doing pretty alright. Me and Nami making the first huge mistake there. And here, Gragas overstaying quite a Gragas and Yasuo overstaying quite a bit. But it's fine. They're kind of distracting the enemy team uh, as they're threatening the inhibitor, which allows us to actually put pressure onto the mid lane tower. And Nunu shows up with his snowball. I, bring, I try to blink away, but I actually get hit by the snowball right before it it happens. So here, uh, Akshan outs me for some reason. We already burst a Nunu because he is obviously going AP, so he's very, very squishy. So here, uh, I get hit by the center root, so I'm going to back off a little bit. I get a nice ult across everybody. Akshan's shield is so huge. I jump in to try to get the kill on him, but Akshan's shield is way too huge. His passive plus his barrier is way too huge. I end up feeding and just dying there, which causes Nami to die as well. Yasuo comes in 1v4 to try to clean up. But you know, even if you're a fat Yasuo, uh, killing 1v4 is a little bit hard. He gets the Senna at least, gets CC'd unfortunately and he dies. Now Trindamir finds himself in no man's land in the middle of 3 people. He tries to trade onto the Akshan but Akshan instead gets a double kill. So uh, of course with that Akshan actually, does Akshan actually revive anybody? I'm not sure but uh, we basically, our team gets aced, the enemy team is all up. Possibly Akshan got a revive there. I do believe that that was the case because he did get um, the kills and assists onto both the Yasuo and the Trindamir, so definitely his team got revived. Here I'm just gonna pick up the red buff. And the enemy team actually is trying to is gaining some traction, gaining some leverage because we are we are making some huge throw plays here. We we got aced, you know, that's the second huge throw play of the team. First one being me and Nami overextending. Here I arcane shift behind the tower so I didn't get uh, chunked out by uh, the Akshan out probably wouldn't do too much damage though because I am at full health but you know Baron just not take any damage at all so here I'm pinging Baron you know we, we are still very very heavy it's still 25 to 15 we are throwing the game no doubt but we're still 7k gold ahead so we are just gonna force the Baron now we can probably easily secure this Baron the Ukong is in the top lane he has no chance of securing the, the, the Baron here nice Bobby uh, uh Bobby <laughs> Nami bubble <laughs> onto the Nunu so I get a nice huge out across the enemy team Yasuo kills off the Brahm as well as the Akshan and we ace the enemy no we don't ace the enemy team the, the Ukong and the um, Senna is still alive but honestly at this point I was thinking okay we, the game is won all we gotta do is we just push uh, we just push and get, uh, just get their base basically. Uh, I mean, probably not their base because it, it is uh, a little bit difficult to uh, get the base when they're all about to respawn. It's still 12 minutes into the game only, so yeah. Here we pick up the mid inhibitor already and we are actually e even gonna put some damage onto the base here. So as you can see, we, we basically get about half of the base health. Then we're gonna have to obviously back off because the entire enemy team has respawned. We obviously make our third huge throw of the game by overstaying, not backing when we could. I'm jumping in, getting, uh, taking care of business. Uh, but you know, we are, make no mistake about it, this is a very greedy move by us. This is not the right play. Here is our you know, third huge throw of the game. I'm pinging Dragon because we might as well get Dragon as we are retreating. Of course, I'm going to pick up the Honey Fruit along the way. Uh, Ukong is alive, but he's not really going to be able to contest this very, very well. We already secured the Dragon. Akshan shows up in the area. And you know, uh, what do we do? We of course chase the kill, which is the Akshan. Akshan um, uh, swings, heroic swings a away, and nothing much we can do there. Trindamir kind of just counter jungling, uh, nothing too huge, and I'm just gonna push out the wave. I already have my three item power spike, uh, including my Blade of the Rune King. I also have my Zanya's Hourglass, so I I'm pretty confident here. But I'm just gonna recall, reset. You know, I have a huge amount of gold. I can get the entire Seraldas Grudge just straight up. So I'm only one item from from you know full build but here my team of course is kind of a bit overextend again um, I shoot my ult across which actually does connect onto I believe it's the Sen and the Akshan um, but unfortunately um, you know my team is kind of in the fight I'm not there Akshan dies so that's great and we kind of want to actually pick up the tower instead of the kills uh, here 
Yasuo dies, everybody dies. I show up to the party just as everybody dies, and I'm like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying my best to get away, but you know, I can't really run from four enemies. There's too much CC, there's too much slows. I'm trying to, my best to kite them out. I, I is when I'm on 1 HP, which is not really going to help me out that much. I try my best to trade... Uh, Onto somebody, onto the onto somebody, the Ukam, but it doesn't really work out. Here's Trindamir is actually getting off a solid split push, but unfortunately the entire enemy team is still alive except for the Akshan, so he can't really do too much. Instead of backing off, he actually goes for the Senna and he does pick up the Senna, I believe. Yeah, he does pick up the Senna with the red buff, but unfortunately because of that, he is. Um, yeah, that's our fourth huge throw of the game right there. So. He, he dies, he's the jungler, so the jungler is important because uh, Baron is coming up in 30 seconds. He's gonna revive about that time, but you know, you don't want to be just dying, especially when you're the jungler. Uh, Baron is coming up in 20 seconds, he is responding in 27 seconds, so enemy could actually easily pick up Baron. Not, I wouldn't say easily, they could actually try to pick up Baron before he even respawns, and we would be in trouble. But of course, we are still um, ahead of the enemy team by like 10k gold, so... Uh, it's quite hard for the enemy team to do that. But basically, we're just throwing the game non-stop. Like, we had four huge throw plays already. And we're about to see our fifth huge throw play. Now, I'm just talking about throwing this, this entire game because this game was so easy. Like, if we just played this carefully and we didn't just throw the game, we would have won this game or the enemy team would have surrendered like five minutes ago. Because we already like 10k gold up like five minutes ago. We could have been like like 15 to 20k go up by now if we weren't just throwing the game non-stop and giving the enemy team shutdowns here I'm just baiting the Baron like I know the enemy team is going to show up for the Baron I know Trinder Mirror is respawning so we're just baiting the Baron here enemy team shows up we turn onto them but we get hit by all the CC and Nunu full AP Nunu BOOM one shots us now I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a throw play I would say that this is an it's an okay play to bait the enemy team into your team, you know, of course, to to uh, get the kill, get the kills, and then possibly end the game or pick up the Baron, especially when you're tanking goal ahead. I wouldn't really say that it's a throw play, but um, you know, we just got one shot by the full AP Nunu, and because of that, the enemy team has picked up Baron. Now, another kind of throw thing that you could say is that Trindamir died died just now uh, when we were all alive, and now we all died, and Trindamir is left alive. So we're stuck in the vicious cycle of. You know, you know, Trindamir being the only one alive, then Trindamir dies. All four of us are alive except Trindamir, and now Trindamir... And we all four die, and now Trindamir revives, and Trindamir is the only one on the map. So, kind of, we are stuck in that vicious cycle at the moment. Trindamir manages to solo kill the Ukog, which is uh, great. It's a shutdown as well, so... The, the 1v1 between the junglers is won by Trindamir. Honestly, to no one's surprise, we all knew that Wukong had no ult. So, uh, Trindamir should definitely win that 1v1 10 out of 10 times. So here, uh, obviously, Elder Dragon is the next objective. Enemy team got, gets there before us, but Akshan uh, overextends, and we get the kill onto the Akshan, which is huge, because th there won't be any revives. I stasis so that I won't get hit by everybody. Here, I almost get one shot by the AP Nunu again, and there's really not much I can do here. I'm getting slowed. I'm getting just destroyed by, by that. In the meantime, Trindamir taking his blue buff, by the way. So... Here, uh, thankfully, uh, they're all pretty low. Trindamir comes in, mocking uh, Shout, gets the kill onto the uh, Brahm, gets the kill onto the Nunu, and honestly, at this point in time, the Death Tyrants are long enough where we can actually just attempt to end the game. But instead, the team is going for the Elder Dragon. Honestly, I would say that this is a throw play because we could just end the game here, but we're greeting for Elder Dragon, so I I've, I've lost count of how many throw plays we have, but um, you know, regardless, we, we are uh, we are doing fine, I, I guess you could say. So, Redemption to attempt to steal, uh, Sienna out to attempt to steal, um, not not gonna work today. Wukong disappears into the sunset, and Trindamir just takes the red buff for his efforts. And here, of course, with the Elder Dragon, we are pretty strong. I guess it's technically two dragons apiece, but we do have the Elder. Because the enemy team has actually managed to pick up two despite being so behind, which is honestly pretty respectable. So, I've, I have... Um, um, respawn so we gotta stop uh, throwing the game here I'm just uh, probably typing I, I typed quite a bit this match because I was just typing that we need to stop throwing we need to group together you know we need to you know just stick together and, and stop just going one by one and stop just throwing the game and, and my team was pretty cooperative honestly like, no one was blaming each other we we're all like yeah 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 we're making mistakes we're overextending you know like everybody knows that they're making mistakes I know I'm making mistakes as well I know I'm overextending like, like maybe twice or thrice this game so you know no one is uh, everybody's guilty of it. No one is. No one is. Uh, 
exempted from that. Everybody has overextended like multiple times this game. So here, you know, I'm just pinging to attack, attack the tower. Uh, our team is still uncoordinated. <laughs> uh, everybody wants to go mid lane, but I'm just pinging to a group in the bot lane, and our team is a little bit confused as to where we're actually gonna go. I was like, oh no, that's not gonna go too well. The amazing Nami ultimate. We one shot the Nunu before he can one shot us. We go for the Akshan who runs into the entire uh, enemy team for some reason, and you know, at this point, I knew the game was won. You know, the two of them. Two of the uh, three, uh, I should say, three of the enemy team are dead. Only Wu Kong and Senna are left alive, and there's honestly not too much they can do. Here I'm just pushing out the mid lane as well, so we have two waves to work with in case they somehow manage to clear off our wave. The Wu Kong desperately just tries to out, out to do something to try to save his base. It isn't gonna happen. We pick up the victory, but honestly, so many throw plays this entire game. It just shows you that, you know, uh, you know, the power of Ezreal, I guess. So. I guess you take a look at the stats. Our entire team got either A or S. And I got a quadra kill of the most damage. But so many of the, these deaths on, on our entire team could have easily been avoided. But regardless, uh, thank you guys so much for watching the video. And goodbye.